live from the Albert Hall in London. Just kidding. Just hold on one moment, please. Do you believe your childhood trauma is affecting your current thoughts, feelings, or behavior? Adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs, are stressful, traumatic events that occur before a child reaches the age of 18. Toxic stress from ACEs can change brain development and affect how your body responds to stress. In this video, I will be talking about a few traumatic events that I experienced in my childhood. With that said, let's jump right in. Hey young people, welcome back to Sue Space. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. And if you are new to my channel, thank you for being here. If you've suffered or are suffering from childhood trauma, you may grow up remembering vivid moments, but not the total event. One experience I remember growing up was being bullied. Bullying comes in all forms. It involves name calling, intimidation, threatening to cause harm, deliberate exclusion from activities, verbal abuse. Most bullying occurs at school or on a playground. School was where I was bullied the most. I was called bulldog because the shape of my nose, gums because color of my gums that shows when I smiled. I was pushed into the wall on the playground, causing me to need 10 stitches on my forehead. I was bullied throughout my teenage years, causing me to lose confidence and I began struggling with my self-esteem. As I became older, I began minimizing and pretending it did not happen. But to heal, I had to recognize that it had occurred and to realize I was not responsible for it. I bumped into one of my childhood bullies on this trip. We laughed about events that happened at school but we also talked about how his bullying affected me. He denied the bullying, but I had already forgiven him because holding on to the pain doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. Healing is accepting what has hurt you, but not letting it define you. Moving on to my next childhood trauma which was childhood injury. I was about seven years old. It was winter time. My mom had just come home from working the night shift. So it had to be about seven or 8 a.m. in the morning. My mom was half asleep and I'm not exactly sure if she heard me when I said I was cold. But back in the 1970s, we used to use what was called a paraffin heater to heat our homes. I figured I could warm up by moving closer to the heater. But what happened next was my dressing gown, robe, caught a fire. And the next thing I knew, I was engulfed in flames. My screaming woke my mother up, who immediately rolled me into the blankets and rushed me to the hospital. I was left with a scar that will be a constant reminder of this traumatic event. I blamed my mother in the beginning for irresponsible supervision, but when I stopped blaming her, I began to blame myself. But I was just seven years old. I was just a child. How could I have known better? Growing up, my scar was a constant reminder of that dreadful day. And I struggled with so many insecurities about my body because of it. It wasn't until I acknowledged my pain and understood my trauma was I able to move forward. Go ahead and comment down below. Healing is a process and takes time. What is important? is that I am trying. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and tap the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload. This will help me with my mission to reach as many young people as possible. Remember, 
this channel is for you. Then there was the loneliness. There was times I felt sad about being left alone. As soon as my mom left to go to work at 8 p.m., my older brother and sister were out the door to meet their friends as soon as her car disappeared down the street. I was left alone a lot to take care of myself and I relied on my neighbors when I felt unprotected or scared. Yes, I snitched on my brother and my sister to my mother because they were not taking care of me like they were supposed to. I would later join the girls brigade similar to Girl Scouts in the US, which gave me a sense of belonging. Young people know that it's okay to be alone. Being alone taught me how to make myself happy without relying on someone else. In these times, I read a lot of books, listened to a lot of music, not depressing ones, and I also expressed myself through writing. Journaling is so important. So how did this trauma impact my view of the world, you ask? I became socially withdrawn and shy. I kept all my emotions and thoughts in my diary and on my bedroom wall. I lacked self-expression. That led to my whining stage. I would whine anytime I needed attention because I wasn't getting any. Being alone allows you to be with your own thoughts. That's when you discover your own voice. It allowed me to become mentally stronger. There are plenty of things you can do by yourself and there's a question I would ask myself often. If you don't like being by yourself, why would anyone else like being with you. Young people, if you don't make peace with your past, it will continue to show up in your presence. Thank you for watching. Be safe and true to yourself. Until the next one. That's my daddy making all this noise. He see me recorded.